would this mechanism work? NO2 plus CO makes NO and CO2. If we did a series of experiments and we determined that the rate law was second order with respect to the nitrogen dioxide, and then it gives you this possibility. If we had a two-step mechanism, where in that first step, we would take two molecules of nitrogen dioxide and turn it into a molecule of nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. Then in step two, that nitrogen trioxide that we made in step one goes on to react with some carbon monoxide to make NO2 and CO2. Would that work? Our NO3 is an intermediate. It gets made in step one and then gets canceled out in step two. In addition to that, one of the NO2 molecules on the left-hand side gets canceled out by the NO2 that's on the right-hand side. So we only have one NO2 left over. So far, so good, because if we add together our step one and step two, what we'd have left is a nitrogen dioxide and a carbon monoxide as reactants, and our products, nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. So far, so good. Now, what about that overall rate law? The overall rate law says that it's second order with respect to NO2. If that's the correct, if this mechanism is correct, remember that slow step is the one that determines the overall rate. It throttles back your overall reaction. It can only go as fast as the slowest step. The steps add up to that overall reaction and the rate law for that slow step would have to be the same as the rate law for the overall reaction. And it is. In that step number one, that elementary step, because it's an elementary step, we could use the stoichiometry to determine what its rate law would be. The rate law for step one would be K times NO2 squared. That's also the rate law for the overall reaction. Because the slow step, step one, is the one that determines your overall reaction, and the rate law for that slow step matches the rate law for the overall reaction, it's a go. That one would work. That mechanism is possible. What if you have this situation? It wants us to prove something. Let's take two nitrogen monoxide molecules, react them with some oxygen gas, and it would make two nitrogen dioxide molecules. Now it tells us that the rate law for that reaction would be second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to oxygen. It wants us to prove that this mechanism below leads to the rate law that you see there. The mechanism below has two steps. We have that dark blue step, almost black. Step one, which is fast, it's an equilibrium reaction. And then we have step two, a slow rate determining step. If step two is the rate determining step, the one that throttles back, that holds back how fast our reaction could go, wouldn't the rate law, the overall rate law for the equation be N2O2 times oxygen? Well, here's the problem. N2O2 is an intermediate in that reaction. It gets produced in step one, 
but then that N2O2 goes on and reacts with our oxygen in step two to make our products. And we can't have intermediates in our rate laws. So how do we do this? What do we do? How do we write a rate law when our intermediate is the thing that's reacting in our slow step? And if we're not allowed to put intermediates in our rate law equations, now what? So we're going to think back to our knowledge about equilibrium. If we focus on just step one, that equilibrium step, we know at equilibrium that the forward reaction rate has to equal the reverse reaction rate. In other words, because this is an elementary step, we could look at that balanced chemical equation to determine the rate laws for both the forward and reverse reactions. So the forward reaction would be K times nitrogen monoxide squared. We're allowed to use the stoichiometry to determine the rate law because it's an elementary step. If we focus on the reverse reaction, the reverse reaction would be K times N2O2 to the first power. Again, based on the stoichiometry in that equilibrium reaction. Because it's at equilibrium, those two reaction rates would have to be set equal to one another. You might recall from when we did our equilibrium chapter, we found K expressions where we did concentration of the products over concentration of the reactants. If we did that, if we rearranged our rate laws, uh, rate equations that you see there above, and we moved the K reverse to the left-hand side and our nitrogen monoxide squared over to the right-hand side, we'd be able to solve for our equilibrium constant. For that reaction. Now let's focus on that step two, that slow rate determining step. If we could put intermediates in our rate law equation, we would say that the K2, the rate constant for step two, times N2O2 times O2 would be our rate law. We can use the stoichiometry to determine the rate law because it's an elementary step. If we rearrange our equilibrium constant from that step one, we just said a second ago that the equilibrium constant would be the dinitrogen dioxide over the nitrogen monoxide squared. If we rearrange that, to solve for our N2O2 because our N2O2 is an intermediate. We can't have it in our overall rate law. So we have to get rid of it somehow. And we could get rid of it by substituting in some other variables. So if we rearrange our equilibrium constant expression to solve for N2O2 instead of having it solve for K, it would look like this. Well, now that we have N2O2 equal to something, we could substitute in that K and that nitrogen monoxide squared into our rate law for our elementary step number two. That KNO squared gets put into place of where the N2O2, our intermediate, used to be. That K uh, rate constant for elementary step two, and then we multiply that times big K, an equilibrium constant from step one. If we multiply those guys together, it would give us a new value of another K um, our rate constant for that slow reaction. So our rate could be now 
nitrogen monoxide squared times O2. If you go back a couple slides, you'll see that's what it asks us to prove. So, based on our knowledge of equilibrium, we know that this mechanism must work.